Hi everyone, I'm delighted to have three industry experts with us today to share their valuable insights on the latest developments of virtual assets, Web3, DeFi and the Metaverse. Rocky, can I start with you? As an expert in licensing and regulatory matters, could you share with us the recent trends regarding the legal and regulatory developments for these frontier technologies? Thank you, Rino. Yeah, indeed, there have been significant development uh, in the legal and regulatory side covering different categories of digital assets. So, um, in particular, for tokenized uh, securities, whether it's uh, tokenized bonds, tokenized shares, um, there is the virtual asset, the B uh, BTC and ETH and the likes, and of course, uh, di digital money. Um, we have CBDCs, uh, stable coin, and also tokenized deposits. Uh, in terms of global developments, uh, there are quite a few areas. Uh, legislative uh, initiative, uh, Mika in Europe, for example. Um, there's a new uh, stablecoin regime in Japan. Uh, US, we've seen quite a few uh, enforcement court cases. Uh, and the UK, uh, there's a new digital securities sandbox uh, from the FCA. Um, so, in terms of uh, opportunities for Hong Kong, I think it's quite important as an international financial center. Um, for us to stay at the forefront of this. Um, so it's not only to catch up to global developments, uh, but it's important for us to uh, look to lead in this space as well. Uh, but it's great to see Hong Kong's commitment uh, in this area. Um, so we've seen uh, virtual asset service provider regime under the AMLO. Um, we have the SFO securities regime for uh, digital securities. Um, we have Hong Kong court case that recognize the legal property nature of virtual asset. And of course, uh, the HMA with uh, Project Enbridge on CBDC, uh, Project Ensemble on uh, tokenized deposits, uh, and also the latest stablecoin uh, licensing regime. Um, and of course, the uh, latest um, stablecoin issuer uh, sandbox arrangement as well. Um, so it's, it will be great to see uh, Hong Kong to continue uh, uh, its commitment um, uh, in order to lead the space as well. Thank you. Edmund? The government seeks to develop a responsible and sustainable virtual asset ecosystem in Hong Kong. So from your perspective, how could these frontier technologies enable the financial services sector in Hong Kong? The impact will be profound as they further develop. First of all, they shall increase the liquidity. Hong Kong has the depth and width of many financial products, which will enable their ideal place to implement tokenization of such assets for distribution, transaction, and settlement using stable coins as well as digital identity, ideally on a public blockchain. It will also facilitate the pairing, transfer, as well as exchange among different asset class. These provide more options for our customers to trade and increase liquidity. Secondly, they shall also increase efficiency. Hong Kong has one of the best high-speed internet infrastructure in the world, which will support a stable virtual environment for the coming merge of metaverse, AR, VR, and AI technologies that will enable customers to have customized services and transactions using stabilized and tokenized assets in the virtual space. This next generation of internet banking shall increase the efficiency of our financial services and our customer satisfaction. Now, Peter, what can Hong Kong learn from the successful international experiences? Thanks, Enoch. Yeah, I think when it comes to um, you know, looking at what other jurisdictions have been doing, and in particular where they've been quite successful, and I think we can really take those lessons, I think the first is some jurisdictions have set out a really clear vision of what does this, or what do these sectors look like, and how does Hong Kong evolve in the future, and where does the government see that going? That's really important because it means that um, both you know, the public as well as corporations can then all work towards a common, um, a common direction. That makes long-term investment decisions a lot easier for people to, to think through. And I think it also means that people looking outside can, can see what Hong Kong is really trying to do with, this new, with these new technologies. I think the second thing is once you've got that vision, I think the government really should be trying to work with market-leading companies to do proof of concepts across different areas that work all towards building on that vision and, and taking it forward. And when they do that, it's really important to say, well, the companies that the government does work with do that on the basis where they share what le they've learned. And also when they're, they're sort of industry standards that are kind of developed as you go are then also kind of, uh, I guess, shared with, with other market participants. So we can build up that ecosystem and that network effect 
that is really, really important for many of these new emerging technologies to, to really reach that scale and to have that market competition in a dynamic ecosystem. Thank you all for sharing your insights with us regarding the latest developments of these frontier technologies. The Hong Kong Institute for Monetary and Financial Research has recently published two reports on decentralized finance and the metaverse. We hope you can find time to check them out.